Hello and welcome back to Lurks for a Needle. My name is Jess and today we're going to be making this fabric necklace and earrings. Here are some more examples of the earrings and necklaces that I've made, all of which are available on my Etsy site, which there is a link in the description below. So for today's video, you're going to need the fabric that you're going to use to make your earrings, some home decor interfacing, some double-sided fusible interfacing, some E6000 craft glue, and a tray to put it in, some jewelry findings, which today we're going to be using these studs. and the backings to go with them. You'll also need a backing fabric for your earrings as well. So first we're going to start by measuring out our home decor fabric. cutting it to the size of our earring fabric. This, uh, the extra glue doesn't mess up our iron. Now you're going to want to follow the directions on your interfacing. In your backing fabric, you can go ahead and iron that onto the double-sided interfacing. Once that's done, you just peel it off. put that to the other side of your earrings. Now I was just using a scrap piece from another quilt. So we're going to cut out each of the flowers on here and I went ahead and cut out each of the petals too. So we're just going to do some decorative stitches along the center of the flowers. And we're going to cut our thread short up against the earrings. So we're going to use some fabric check, or fray check, and this is going to make sure that all of our fabric ends do not fray. So we're going to go all the way around our flowers, and then also we're going to put a little bit on the knots on the back that we just made. So once that's dried, you can go ahead and clip off the thread ends all the way against the fabric on the back of the earring. Alright, so now that we've got that done, and look how cute they look. With your E6000, make sure that you open a window because it does get very stinky. And we only need just a little tiny amount on our tray. So I'm using a little chopstick to be able to scoop it off of our tray and onto the flat part of the stud. You don't need very much. I'm going to put it right on top of the threads that we have back there. And you want to let these sit for at least 24 hours before even trying to wear them. They are going to 
slide around a little bit. So we're going to set these off to the side. And now we're going to start on a cute little necklace. So we're going to be using this cute little turtle. And we did it the same way as our earrings, except I put felt on the back instead of plain fabric. We're going to cut all the way around. And I'd also cut out some cute little sand dollar earrings to go with it. So to be able to attach him to a necklace, we're going to get out some jump rings. And we're going to figure out how we're going to lay him on the necklace. So you can see with this butterfly one, we just sewed the jump rings right onto the felt. So I think I'm going to have the turtle going like this on the necklace. I'm going to put the jump rings up on his flippers. I'm going to use these larger ones. I'm just going to use needle and thread and start sewing these on. Now I'm only going to go through the felt and the interfacing. I'm not going to go through the front fabric. And we're going to do the same thing to the other side. Right, and there is the pendant part of our necklace. And we're going to go ahead and use the fray check all the way around the turtle, too. And make sure you hit the knots on the jump rings as well. So let's figure out which chain we're going to use. I'm thinking we're going to go with this silver one. Okay, the silver one and this black rat tail one at Michael's. So I cut a 24 inch long chain. And now we're going to get some more jump rings and the clasp. I'm going to lay everything out and figure out how many jump rings I'm going to have on each side. I'm going to use my little tiny pliers and open up each of the jump rings. very tedious and tiny work to do. So I ended up doing three jump rings on each side. And it was quite hard to keep two jump rings in one ring while trying to close one of the rings. That's what you kind of see these 
struggling with right there. You definitely have to make sure that the ends of the rings meet up, that way they don't come apart. straighten out the necklace because it was getting a little twisted from me handling it. So I'm going to finish up with the other side and attaching it to the clasp. And here's how the clasp works. It's very pretty. Go ahead and attach our little turtle pendant. Luckily, the end of the necklace was able to go through there. And here is our very elegant little turtle. Thanks for watching. I hope this inspired you to make your own fabric jewelry. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos. Comment on if you liked today's video or you want to see more. Thanks!